Hey guys I'm Yuruzi. Part 2 of What If Naruto Was a Mimic Ninja? Sharingan, one of the most renowned jujitsu of the ninja world. In Naruto's world its copying abilities may be pushed to the side thanks to one blonde ninja. In a ninja world just as technological as ours, Naruto will become a legend. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and check the author in the description. Let's start. Chapter 6, Arc End, Welcome to the Black Exam. The ice prison glowed red as chakra swirled around Naruto's body. With his hands like claws, fangs bared, and red eyes staring forward the crazed Naruto roared with all his fury prepared for a new fight. Gah! Fuck my life! Naruto stared into the unseen face of his attacker while covering the body of Suki protectively. The crimson chakra swirled about him menacingly as it seemed to twirl in a strange double helix form rising well above the blonde boy's head. Haku's fear grew even more when she saw the crimson chakra form a fox head before roaring and the chakra dissipating. Naruto raised his head upwards to where Haku was and suddenly his form blurred out of sight. Haku looked around wildly before watching the rising form of the feral boy fly towards her. Confident in the strength of the ice, Haku waited for Naruto to bounce off the mirror. The ice-wielding ninja's eyes widened in surprise as the boy's fist started to crack the mirror and her form flew out of it before Naruto smashed completely through. Haku sprang into another mirror and her image reflected all around Naruto. I cannot take any more chances. Forgive me. Each image of Haku readied their senbon before unleashing a wave of needles at the crouching boy. Naruto watched as the needles came closer but did nothing to stop them. As the weapons pierced into him, Naruto hunched over before throwing out his arms and roaring. A pulse of chakra sprang out and the senbon were thrown from Naruto's form. Haku started going for another mirror but was surprised when Naruto sped to follow her. Spinning around Haku threw another torrent of weapons but was frightened beyond belief when the boy roared again sending a wave of chakra-laced sound and air barreling into the weapons, rendering them useless. As Naruto neared the girl, he swiped with his claws trying to open her neck for the world to see. Luckily, Haku made it into a mirror before that happened and watched Naruto land on the ground. Spotting a mirror above the blonde she started rushed to that one. Graph! Naruto roared again catching the attention of Haku and suddenly the boy did something that made her blood run cold. Naruto, while watching the girl fly to the mirror, raised his left arm before throwing it out. When the arm reached the apex of its swing a cloud of smoke obscured it from view for just a moment and suddenly the boy's arm stretched forward. The clawed hand rose as the arm stretched upwards and grasped the surprised girl's neck. With an animalistic snarl Naruto retracted the rubber-like arm, pulling Haku closer while red chakra swirled into Naruto's free arm. When Haku was right in front of Naruto he gave one last growl before slamming the crimson chakra-infused fist right into Haku's face. Haku flew through a mirror as if it was tissue paper and rolled on the ground before coming to a stop outside of the ice dome. Struggling to stand up she watched in awe as her mirrors shattered and collapsed around the boy like falling snow while smoke drifted from the once again normal arm. Standing upright she waited for her death when she saw Naruto rush to her, his claws ready to pierce through her. Forgive me Zabusasama. He is too strong for me, the mask upon her face cracked and fell away starting to show her face to the world. When the last shard of the mask fell Naruto's hand was inches from stabbing into the face it had covered. You. I know you. Why? Why did you do it? Naruto rasped out, the claws that were about to sink into Haku receding. I am but a tool for Zabuza. Without him I am nothing. He saved me from loneliness. Haku replied, but he's just using you. That does not matter to me. If he asks it then I will do it, even if it is to kill. But killing is what we as ninja must do, even if it is for avenging a fallen comrade. Haku paused to look over Naruto's shoulder. She gave her life to save you. Do you feel nothing after I have killed her? Naruto closed his eyes tight till they hurt. With a loud yell he lashed out and punched Haku. Spitting out some blood she turned her head back to Naruto. What happened to that anger you had before? You won't be able to kill me like that. I don't want to kill you. But you, you killed Sasuke, no Suki, I don't know what to think. I don't believe my life should be deemed as someone's tool. I am not something to be used then thrown away like an object. Naruto screamed out. His hands were clenched as he stared at the ground in anger. 
he wanted to be a shinobi for as long as he could remember. But did becoming a ninja mean that he was just someone else's blind tool? Naruto couldn't accept that. Naruto. Haku said cutting Naruto off from his thoughts I can no longer serve Zabuza like this. I am but a broken tool so I ask you, please kill me. Haku opened her arms wide pleading for the boy in front of her to end her. My life has been nothing but sorrow till I met my master. Kakashi jumped away from another sword strike from the mist that would have most definitely taken his arm off. It seems that that chakra is gone. I hope Naruto is okay. I need to end this quickly. Swinging his leg around, Kakashi kicked Zabuza across the floor giving the Sharingan wielder some breathing room. Forgive me Zabuza but I believe the time for messing around is over. I need to get back to my students. Kakashi said while pulling out a scroll from one of the pouches on his vest. Running his thumb over a wound from the swordsman's weapon, Kakashi swiped the bloody thumb over the scroll and rolling it up flew through a few hand signs. Kuchios, Dotan, Suga no Jutsu. Kakashi slammed his hands and scroll to the ground where an array of seals burst out around the scroll. Foolish, Kakashi, what kind of attack could you possibly do if you can't see me? Zabuza said from the mist. Who says that I need to see you? Suddenly, around Zabuza dogs burst from the ground and gripped onto his appendages restricting him completely. Be thankful Zabuza. You get to see my one original jutsu. A chorus of chirping filled the air as the mist slowly drifted away. Your life was hard. Naruto's words seemed to state the obvious but it still was nice to hear the boy's sincere voice say it. Haku was just happy he listened to her tale before she was ready to leave the living world. Everybody has problems Naruto Kuen. Some are just able to deal with them better than others. I don't know if my way was the best choice but I stuck with it. Haku replied. I know everyone has issues. You don't have to tell me that. But to me, I always believed that if you can persevere through the bullshit that life can throw at you then someday you'll gain something important worth all of that trouble. Haku chuckled at that. You know, we could have been friends if we met in different circumstances. Yes. Yes we could have. And with that Haku watched as Naruto grabbed a kunai from his weapon holster and ran towards her. You will be a fine man someday Naruto. As Naruto neared closer the mist started to lift allowing him to see his surroundings better. Haku seemed clearer but not only that he was able to make out the forms of Kakashi and Zabuza a few yards away. He was yanked from his observations when he felt Haku grab his arm and knock it away making him throw away his weapon. I'm sorry Naruto. It looks like I can't just die here. Haku suddenly blurred away. Naruto watched in surprise as Haku's form sped towards where he saw his sensei and Zabuza, finally noticing the situation that the swordsman was in. Haku was going to sacrifice herself. Wait Haku. Stop. Naruto screamed out, reaching for where the girl was no doubt heading. His cries were for naught as he knew there was nothing he could do and that is when his emotions started to grow into turmoil. The world around Naruto slowed down. He could see Haku running towards her trapped master. He could see the sparks coming off of his sensei's hand as Chakra covered it in a cold blue fury. He knew when the three were to meet. He knew how long it would take till the meeting was to come. He could see it, but it wasn't because of a new power. It was not because he gained a new ability, a sudden bloodline, or the Kyubi helping him. No, Naruto knew all this for one sole reason. His brain gave him this knowledge knowing he could do nothing but watch. Even now as he reached out towards them screaming for Haku to stop, his mind gave the poor boy a sick but oddly accurate countdown till his sensei reached Zabuza and Haku intervened. As Naruto yelled out he unconsciously started sending chakra towards his outstretched arm and that is when the count started. 5 seconds. The chakra started to gather at an immense rate into Naruto's arm. 4 seconds. Haku was almost to her master ready to die to protect the man who saved her. Three seconds. Zabuza watched as his opponent came closer, his muscles relaxing as he resigned himself to his fate. Two seconds. Kakashi held his hand high, ready to plunge the Raikiri into the man before him. One second. Naruto's arm started to hurt and burn. The chakra output so great it caused a pale blue glow. Zero seconds. The pain was too great. The energy needed to be released. It was too much pain. Too much too much. Stop. The cry echoed across the bridge for all to hear. A resounding boom followed the yell, causing Kakashi to stop his advance and Haku to stop parallel to Silver-Haired Man. 
Both were only a few feet from Zabuza, Kakashi in front ready to pierce with his jutsu and Haku to side ready to jump in front of Zabuza. Suddenly an image came from the dissipating mist that caused the three ninja to reel back, in Zabuza's case as far back as he could, for a ball of chakra almost as big as a man came careening down the line where no doubt all three of them would have intersected. The chakra ball zoomed by paving a nice grove in the cement before flying off to the side of the bridge and slowly dispersing. What the hell? Kakashi looked back where the source of the chakra had come from. His question was answered when he saw Naruto come stumbling out from the shroud. The entire upper right part of his jacket looked to be burned off, though oddly his skin looked fine enough. When Naruto reached his sensei he looked up into his teacher's mismatched eyes, a look of complete despair on his face. Please sensei. No more death. No more killing. Suki is gone already, why must we add more blood? Naruto's words shocked Kakashi and he looked to where his now second female student lay. Naruto what happened? Why is Sasuke now Su? Kakashi was cut off as he heard clapping and spun around to see the source of the trouble in wave. Gaddis stood at the end of the bridge surrounded by mercenaries, his hands clapping in a condescending manner. Well, well. Looks like the fabled demon of the mist isn't as almighty as I thought. Gaddis said with a malevolent sneer on his face. Gatu. What is the meaning of this? Zabuza growled out, the Nin Ken now dispersing after Kakashi released both of his jutsu. Well I was hoping that you ninja would go ahead and kill each other thus giving me the chance to keep all that money I was going to pay you. Plus, I could get to that town that those ninja wanted to protect. Gata started laughing. It was the perfect win-win for me. The greedy little man spotted Haku off to the side, her body starting to show the strain it was in. Gata smirked evilly. Well if it isn't the bitch that busted my arm. I think a little present is in order. Picking up a small piece of concrete, the little man used all his strength to throw it at the tired girl. Haku watched the piece of rock fly lazily towards her knowing she could do nothing about it. The only reprieve she found was that a throw from that weak little man probably wouldn't knock her out. She closed her eyes waiting for the pain when she heard a dull thunk. Opening her eyes she was shocked to find Naruto standing in front of her, the bare arm of his in front of her face. The rock fell to the ground with a clatter and Naruto looked behind him to see Haku staring at him in shock. Ha, protecting a precious person makes one strong right? I think I'll make that my purpose. As the words left Naruto's lips his arm suddenly exploded in a fountain of blood. Small rips and cuts appeared all over his arm, the rock being the catalyst for the blood now spraying all over Haku's face like red fireworks. Kakashi was next to his student in an instant, grasping him before he could hit the ground. Naruto. Naruto speak to me. Look at that boys. I'm stronger than I thought. Yeah, boss is awesome. Not only rich but powerful, that's Gatu. Kakashi held Naruto close not caring as blood stained his clothes. Kakashi sensei. Yes Naruto. I did a good job right? Naruto asked as consciousness started to fade from him. Yes. Yes you did Naruto. Now sleep, you deserve it. Kakashi laid the boy down slowly making sure to raise his bleeding arm up so he could wrap it in some medical tape from his pouch. Once he made sure his unconscious student was taken care of he slowly stood up keeping his head down. The man's eyes were shadowed by his silver hair, a testament to how angry he must be considering that the hair was up most of the time. Zabuza, said man grunted in response, already feeling the killing intent starting to flow from the Sharingan wielder. Then again he would probably be just as upset if someone was laughing at the pain of his own student. You will watch over my student. You will make sure no harm befalls him. You will stay after so that we may discuss things. If said requests are not met I will do to you what I am about to do to these men. Kakashi whispered. Zabuza raised his non-existent eyebrows in question but conceded in the end. Whatever, my arms hurt from those dogs of yours. Zabuza stated as he kneeled down next to Naruto plunging his sword behind him. Leaning against the massive blade he watched as Kakashi stepped forward towards the crowd. From the amount of chakra leaking out of the silver-haired man, the swordsman believed this would be entertaining to watch. Haku slowly limped towards where her master and Naruto lay hoping to make sure the blonde-haired boy was okay. After a quick diagnostic, she concluded he would be alright. With a sigh of relief she settled down next to the boy as exhaustion took over her body. Kakashi walked forward slowly, both of his eyes shaded with his hair hiding his unbridled fury. He would enjoy doing this. 
As he heard the small insect of a man belittle him, telling him that not even he could stand up to that many men, that was when he raised his head. The man's mismatched eyes bore into Gatu with an eruption of anger causing said man to flinch away. With that, the greedy little man raised his voice ordering his mercenaries to attack. Raising his arms Kakashi looked to be calmly holding both above his head in a surrender, causing the mercenaries to laugh in glee. Suddenly both hands burst into a chorus of chirping as chakra surrounded both hands in a mass of lightning chakra. Taking that as a signal to fight the horde of pathetic swordsmen and rogues rushed at him. In an instant, Kakashi flickered out of their vision. A mess of screams was heard the next second. Zabuza watched in awe at what was happening, even going so far to stand up and use his sword as a sort of step ladder to see above the mercenaries. What he saw was amazing. Apparently line after line of blue crackling lightning appeared, crisscrossing to and fro amongst the men. Wherever the line appeared a spray of blood would follow. He watched until the line crossed so much that it almost resembled a pattern. The streaks of lightning stopped quickly as many of the mercenaries were cut down leaving a very big gap straight towards Gadu. What happened once that trail to the man was formed took the Kiri swordsman's breathe away. Gadu watched in fear as his men died in front of him until a pathway was cut, allowing him to see Zabuza. Suddenly Kakashi appeared in front of him, both hands crackling in glory, and plunged his left hand into Gadu's shoulder. The man cried out, but Kakashi made sure to not hit a vital spot, no his final move would make his justice all the sweeter. You, Gatu, have broken one of the greatest rules that my sensei had taught to me. Never, ever, harm my students. Kakashi whispered as he lifted the man high into the air with the hand plunged into him. Your punishment, death, wait. I can pay you whatever you want. I'll give you anything I have just don't kill me. Gatu pleaded. Kakashi lowered his head and Gatu, through the pain started to feel hope. That is until the ninja before him raised his head showing the spinning Sharingan. Now you die. And with that said Kakashi plunged his right hand into Gata's other shoulder. Gata screamed in agony but his screams only escalated as Kakashi dragged his hands towards each other and Gata's body easily slicing through his insides. When his hands were close together near the middle of Gata's chest, Kakashi clasped them together letting the two chakra encased hands join. Lightning arced out and around the small man's body as it started to glow. Suddenly the man that tried to destroy Wave Country exploded as a lightning bolt shot out and his blood showered around Kakashi and the men around him. The silver-haired man was left standing there with his arms in the air and hands clasped, chakra starting to fade away. Raikiri ran Mayaku. Kakashi whispered slowly turning around. A crossbow bolt flew out of the air and Kakashi smiled. It seems Inari had grown up a bit. Naruto's eyes slowly opened as he regained consciousness. Looking around he noticed that he was lying in a small room most likely back at Tazuna's house. Trying to raise himself up he suddenly had to bite back a shout of pain. Looking to his right he saw his whole entire arm, including fingers, was wrapped to the shoulder in medical tape. The reason for his pain was the red stain that slowly started to blossom on the white background. Scowling, Naruto raised himself up making sure to not reopen all of the wounds on his arm. Naruto slowly walked around the house noticing how quiet it seemed to be. His quiet peace was cut short as he heard yelling from the outside. Frowning once again, the injured boy walked towards the noise. But you don't understand. He was my dream, the reason I became Kunoichi. Why did it have to turn out like this? Naruto heard Sakura wail. Hmm, apparently she found out about Suki. Looks like things were going to get complicated. Sakura it is you who doesn't understand. Do you think she wanted to stay like that for most of her life? Do you think that was fun for her? That wasn't a happy life at all. You are a ninja of Kanoha. This is not a game Sakura. Did you even realize you can die out on the field? And you did this for what, a boy you think you love? Grow up girl. Well looks like Kakashi was trying to give Sakura a pep talk. Naruto decided he might need to intervene before his sensei got really mad. You're wrong. You're so wrong. You don't know about true love. You don't know what I did this for. Just as Kakashi was about to blow up at the crying, pink-haired girl, a voice interrupted them. So what about your family? Kakashi whirled around and spotted Naruto leaning a wall. He instantly noted the red spots that were visible on Naruto's arm and started for the boy. Naruto held up his non-injured arm to stop his sensei. 
Well Sakura. What about your family? Don't you care about them? Of course I care about my family Yubaka, why would you think I don't? Sakura asked looking insulted. Naruto walked towards his pink-haired teammate and stared at her causing her to look clearly uncomfortable. Just as she was about to smack him for freaking her out, he spoke. Did you know that in the eyes of many we have been trained as killers? We have the ability to blend into our surroundings so we can kill without being noticed, the knowledge of where the vital points of person's body are, the ability to throw sharpened pieces of metal at an insane speed so that it can kill as quick as possible. Naruto said almost whispering as he looked towards the sky. Sakura was left speechless, amazed at how profound her blonde teammate sounded. Well considering the fact that Naruto was a bit stupid sometimes this was pretty amazing. Naruto noticed her look and laughed. I guess having my arm explode has given me a little bit of maturity. But Sakura I want you to know that I don't think that I was trained as a killer. I was trained as a protector, and with the skills that I have learned and my nindo I will protect those precious to me. Naruto said as he started to walk back inside. You're smart. I'm sure you can figure out what you want to do as Sakura-chan. Sakura watched Naruto head back into the house, her mind reeling from what the boy said to her. Beside her Kakashi sighed and rubbed his forehead. I hate this job. He muttered. Sakura raised her eyebrow but said nothing. Suddenly she remembered what she was arguing with her sensei about and decided they needed to finish their conversation. Sensei, I'm sorry. I just don't know how to deal with all this. It's too much right now and my inner self is screaming for me let out all my frustration. Sakura mumbled. Shinero. Hell yeah I am. Your brain is already fucked up as it is. Inner Sakura yelled out. Shut up. This is not the time. Sakura thought back. Inner self. Ah the Haruno bloodline runs strong through you I suppose. Kakashi said. It does flow stronger in women. Did you know that some of your family were shinobi? I don't know much about your Kekiai Genkai but from what I have seen in the males, the Haruno bloodline gives them increased perception and faster reflexes because of a voice inside their head, well at least that's what I have heard. Women have a slower perception but instead they have a whole different persona inside their mind. I've heard they are very hard to put under a genjutsu. Sakura blinked olishly at the explanation of her family the only thing she could say was a ha. Huh. Shaking her head she started to speak. Wait, you know of my family? Wait, I have a bloodline. Kakashi sighed again and cursed whatever deity gave him such a complicated team. Naruto found himself inside the room Suki was lying in and sat down. His mind was still hazy from all the excitement that went on but it seemed that Sasuke's change to Suki wasn't a dream. Groaning to himself, he decided to let the girl rest before he asked any questions. As he went to leave he heard a noise. Naruto, said boy turned around and saw the black-haired girl sitting up, watching him with curious eyes. What are you doing here? Uh, um, I was just checking to see how you were doing. I wanted to see how you were, Naruto said. Suki raised an eyebrow to that before her face settled into an impassive mask. HN, well I seem to be alive but now I am like this. I'll always be like this from now on. What you see in front of you is the real me. Suki said. What happened? Naruto sat back down to listen to the girl in front of him, watching her to see if she decided to talk. When I was young the doctor made a misdiagnosis and labeled me as a boy. The Uchiha council was thrilled with the chance of not having one but two prominent male figures that were the sons of the Uchiha clan head. When I was born, problems arose. I was a girl. The council could not know about this. If that were to happen then I would be married off to someone that would make our clan more powerful. I would be the breeding tool of the Uchiha. Suki stated, spitting out tool, in disgust. My father would have nothing like that happen to me. With the help of a seal and the collective chakra of my mother and father I was changed to look like a boy, and not just my looks, my anatomy, my genetics everything changed. The ritual took a lot out of my father and mother so for years they weren't strong enough to train me. The job fell upon my older brother, Itachi. Wait, isn't that the person you want to kill? Naruto cut in. Yeah that is him, but if he protected you why would you want to kill him? Because he betrayed us. He betrayed me. The Uchiha massacre was caused by him. He killed everyone, including father and mother, but for some reason he spared me. 
I want to understand why he did that and I want to avenge my clan by taking his life. Suki said. Her fists tightened in anger while her eyes were shut tight trying to hold in the tears that threatened to spill. Naruto gained a thoughtful look on his face as he thought about the girl's situation. Well if that's the case I could always help you. Naruto told her. Suki's head snapped up in shock and Naruto continued. Yeah cause, well, we are teammates and I guess we'll be on this team for a long time. Why not help each other out? Naruto said scratching the back of his head. Suki looked shocked for a second before schooling her features and smirking. Ichen, just don't drag me down idiot. Oi. Su, uh, I'm not too sure how to say this, but what are you guys going to do now? Team 7 stood in front of the now finished bridge all packed up and ready to go. Suki had another pair of clothes but seeing as she was now significantly smaller in body mass she had to use the wraps and belts from Sakura's bag to keep her shorts from falling down. It didn't make her feel any better that she had to use the pink-haired girl's undergarments either. Naruto's right arm was still bandaged completely though it was more as a precaution for them than for his injury, being that it had healed already. He still wore his jacket with the sleeve burnt off but he didn't really care. What was more important was the people he just asked a question to. We're freelancers kids so we just go where the wind takes us. Thankfully your sensei has agreed to let us go which I'm thankful for so we will probably be around. I'd like to say we won't be in contact but I believe you're a bit too interesting not to keep in touch with. Zabuza stated. The two missing nines stood in front of a the town of Wave as the ninja prepared to leave. The swordsman gave a nod to Haku and she walked forward pulling something from her pouch. Opening Naruto's hand she placed what Naruto believed was a small phone. Naruto poked at it for a second before looking up with questioning look. That is a mobile communicator, it is like a phone but can be carried around and used in different places. Zabusa-sama and I each have one in case we need to contact each other. His number should already be in there. Just press one and call. Haku said as she opened the cover to show a number pad and speaker on the top. Wait, what? You mean I can talk to anyone from a long distance away? I've seen these on TV shows. Naruto said holding the device to the light. I always thought they were just made up, fictional devices. Kakashi took the phone from Naruto's hand. Actually Naruto these are quite real. It's a great use of the mixing of fuinjutsu and technology. It is mostly used by civilians who have a stash of extra money, being that these aren't very cheap. It sends out signals from the device that connect to the electrical poles that are around areas. It's actually quite a complicated piece of work, but all you need to know is that all in all it is basically an extremely long distance walkie-talkie. Kakashi said as he handed Naruto back the phone. Oh, well, okay but if it's so long distance how come we still have courier ninja and aviary messaging? The phones may work long distance but aren't truly reliable due to the fact that the longer the distance the more likely the chance you won't connect. Sakura said. My mother has one, but most people buy them just to make sure that if they are in trouble in the village they have someone to call. Well I still don't really understand but okay. Naruto said scratching the back of his head. Putting the device into his hip pouch, Naruto looked back towards Haku and Zabuza. Well I guess this is it. Naruto walked up to Zabuza and held out his hand. The man looked down surprised before smirking under the bandages and grasping the boy's hand. Do well out there kid. Haku came up to Naruto and gave him a brief hug once the two were done. Good luck naruto kun And with that, the two missing Nin were off. Naruto smiled sadly as he watched them go and then walked back towards his team. After a heartfelt farewell to the people of Wave Team 7 was on the road towards Kanoha. I truly hate my job. The Sandame rubbed his forehead as he received the report for Team 7's mission and so far his migraine was only getting bigger. So let me get this straight. The bridge builder lied about the ranking but will still pay us the proper amount once the country has it. You encountered an A-ranked missing Nin and survived, Sasuke has now become Suki, the village of Wave is now free, and Naruto is able to be in constant contact with this Sabuza and Haku, am I right so far? Sarutobi received a nod from the four people in front of him confirming his words. Grand fucking dandy, I hate this job. The Hokage groaned out. Well ji san it isn't all that bad right? Naruto asked. Receiving a smack to his head from Sakura and whispered to show respect, Naruto continued. Zabuza and Haku aren't bad, they're just trying to survive and with the phone I guess they trust me enough to say they are on our side. 
At least my side I guess. Naruto finished rubbing his head. The communication device you can keep and you can keep it out of the report unless you wish for it to be taken away. I would prefer that this link to a potential ally to not be taken away due to the council wanting to track them. That can be covered up. However, Suki we need to consider what to do with you. The girl in question nodded her head to the Hokage's words. If I may suggest something Hokage-sama. It may be in my best interest to let me explain it to whomever asks on my own terms and in my own way. That way we can deal with questions being asked to the council or you. Suki stated. The Sandane leaned back with a thoughtful expression on his face before nodding. That may be the best way to approach this issue for the time being. Till then Team 7 under Hitaki Kakashi, you are dismissed. The four ninja bowed low before walking out of the room to leave the Hokage to his work. This is going to be a lot of work the old man thought with a sigh. The three genin plus sensei walked out of the building. Well my little kitties, I'm giving you the next three days off. I've got a meeting to go to so do what you must. See ya. And with that Kakashi was gone in a burst of smoke. With a silent and mutual understanding all three genin left to their own devices each with the thought of getting some well-deserved rest after their ordeal. Kakashi appeared back in the room he was in not only five minutes ago only this time he was joined by many in whom all stood in front of the Hokage. The aged leader gave a nod to Kakashi before straightening and stating so now that we are all here, I would like to hear which teams will be nominated to participate in the Chunin exams. It had been three days and Team 7 was back at their traditional meeting point at the bridge and each one felt a little better after their rest. Sakura was able to convince her mother to explain what the Haruno bloodline could do, but seeing as her mother was a civilian and her father was a merchant, her family didn't have a lot of knowledge about it except for a few journals and scrolls from other family members. Suki's three days were filled with going to stores to obtain new clothes. Considering that her clan was very wealthy she had no trouble getting some new clothes that fit. She now sported white shorts that stopped mid-thigh but weren't too tight or loose, a black shirt with a high collar like her old shirt except the collar was folded down and the shirt stopped at her stomach showing some of her skin and a little of the chain mesh armor. Her long hair was tied in a ponytail that reached the middle of her back. The new look was complete with the ninja hip pouch and kunai holster attached and a pair of dark blue ninja sandals. All in all it was much the same as her old outfit but fitted for the girl's new form and curves. Naruto watched his two female teammates as they thought quietly to themselves. It was a change to see Sakura not try and get the attention of Sasuke but seeing as, he was now, shit, there was no boy to ask out. Unless she wanted to date Suki anyways causing an image in the young boy's mind that he couldn't help but blush at. Yawning out loud Naruto leaned against the bridge as the wind blew his open jacket back letting him enjoy the warmth of the sun on his mesh armor shirt. Just as he was about to relax he heard the sound of smoke billowing out and turned around to see his sensei. Good morning my wonderful students. Today I have a surprise for you. Meet me at our training ground and be ready. Kakashi said before he was gone again. He had us wait just for that. Sakura dead panned. Hey Chen, what a lazy man. Suki said before walking off. Naruto could only agree as they headed towards their training ground. As they walked down the street the three ninja ran into Kanoamaru and his little band of friends. The kid spotted the team of Genin and immediately rushed towards them. Boss, you're back from your mission. Can you play ninja with us now? The kids asked. Naruto laughed and scratched his head. He wanted to play but he needed to rush to meet with Kakashi. Before he could say anything Sakura cut in. A ninja playing ninja? That sounds extremely sad. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. I like to help them get better at their ninja skills while they are still in the academy. Naruto shot back. Suki just raised her eyebrow at the exchange but decided to say nothing. Hey boss is she your girlfriend? Kanoamaru asked with a smirk, raising his pinky. Naruto chuckled nervously and blushed at the thought before laughing. Nah Kanoamaru she's just my teammate. Of course boss. Cause there is no way you'd go out with this girl with her huge head. The black-haired one must be your girlfriend, she's cute and obviously matches with you. Naruto's face was a mix of extremely pale and pink from both fear and embarrassment while Suki also went pale though if you looked closely you could see the small blush at being called cute. However both Naruto and Suki slowly turned towards their pink-haired teammate and watched in horror as a dark aura surrounded her. Kanoamaru, take Moegi and Udon and run. Wait what ash? Just run. 
With that said, Naruto along with the kids ran for their lives while Sakura screamed in righteous fury and chased after them. Suki just blinked slowly trying to grasp what just happened then sighed and followed along. Idiots. Naruto thought that he and the kids could escape but that was until Kanoamaru ran into a boy older than Naruto in what looked like a cat suit and wearing makeup. Oi kid watch where you're going. The boy grunted. Sakura caught up to them but stopped her rampage as the older boy grabbed Kanoamaru by the scruff of his neck. Kankuru just let the kid go. You don't want him to get impatient do you? A girl to the boy's side asked. She was wearing a purple and white battle dress that cut off at her thighs and her hair was in what looked like four ponytails. She was also older than him Naruto noted as he noticed the large item behind her back. All in all she looked pretty but the scowl on her face was a bit intimidating Naruto thought. Oi, let him down. Naruto yelled out, Moegi and Udon behind the blonde. Kankuru sneered at Naruto before lifting Kanoamaru higher. Why should I? This little runt bumped into me. Naruto held his hand up and curled it into the gun position, pointing it at the older boy. I'll say it again, let him go or else. Oh yeah. Or else what? The end of Naruto's finger started to glow blue as he focused his chakra. He heard Sakura trying to plead with the older ninja to let the kid down and as he watched his pointer finger become encased in small orb of blue, getting ready to fire. The girl with ponytails saw Naruto's hand and the chakra that surrounded his finger and jabbed Kankuru in the side. Ouch Tamari what the hell? Just as she was about to yell at her brother to let the boy down a pebble came flying and hit Kankuru's hand, forcing him to let Kanoamaru down. The boy scrambled behind Naruto immediately and looked to where everyone saw the rock come from. I believe they asked you to put the boy down more than enough times. Suki stated, leaning against a tree branch. Suki-chan. Sakura said excited to see someone do something. Naruto made TC Chanji sound thinking, why does everyone steal my spotlight? Just as Kankuru was about to yell at Suki a voice pierced the area. Kankuru, you are disgracing yourself. The sharp dry voice came from a red-haired boy in black and grey shinobi clothing with an enormous gourd on his back. Suki looked shocked at the voice, as it came from directly above her without warning, before jumping down next to her two teammates. The red-haired boy appeared in a whirlwind of sand next to Kankuru and Tamari, looking as calm as ever. Gara, Look I'm sorry I just got angry and dash. Shut up. Gara said, cutting him off. The gourd-carrying boy stared at Team 7 with hollow eyes, looking from Sakura to Suki then to Naruto who still had the Raygon ready and pointed at the three other ninja. Naruto, release your Raygon, Kanoamaru, and the others are safe. Sakura pleaded. Naruto made a thoughtful sound before relaxing his hand and allowing the chakra to dissipate. While Tamari mouthed out Raygon in confusion Sakura continued. Excuse me what are foreign ninja like you doing here? We're here for the Chunin exams. Don't you guys know? Tamari scoffed. Enough. We are leaving. Gara said. And with that he turned around and walked away leaving his siblings to run after him to get to his side. Chunin exams? Naruto asked. Before he could think about it any farther he realized that they had been there for quite a while. Saying a hasty goodbye to the three kids he rushed off with his teammates trailing behind him. Naruto stood in front of the door to the exam building waiting for Sakura and Suki. Luckily, he didn't have to wait long because just when he thought of going and the two girls showed up, one clearly nervous. Don't worry Sakura-chan will be alright. Naruto told her. Sakura tried to smile confidently but still felt nervous. Suki took the initiative and opened the doors. As Team 7 walked up the stairs they found themselves in a hallway where it looked like two genin were blocking a door with the sign 301 over it. While Naruto looked out the window to see if they were on the third floor he heard Suki talk about some kind of genjutsu. Tuning it out, he stared out the window a little longer, deciding that they really were on the second floor. As he turned around to tell his teammates he noticed that they were following another team walk away. Scratching his head he joined his team and they headed forward. So what happened? Naruto asked. There was a genjutsu placed over the sign of the door and I called it out. Suki said. Then one of the guys attacked Suki and she went to attack back, but a guy we thought was weak stopped them. Then he, oh I don't want to remember it. The eyebrows, the eyebrows. Sakura shivered. As Naruto raised his own eyebrow in confusion they were stopped by a loud voice. Uchiha Sasuke. I, Rock Lee, challenge you. 
Naruto looked up and was blindsided by the of a boy in a tight-fitting green leotard, bowl-cut, orange leg warmers, and the largest eyebrows he had ever seen. Good god. Suki looked at Naruto's astonished face before scowling and looking at the boy in front of her. My name is actually Suki not Sasuke anymore. Lee looked confused for a second before jumping down. Hmm, strange but that matters not. I wish to challenge you to see how the Uchiha genius can stand up to pure hard work. HN fine if that is what you wish. I will show you the might of the Uchiha. What happened next was a thorough beating at such speeds that Suki had to activate her Sharingan just to catch Lee's movements. Unfortunately she wasn't fast enough to counter any of the boy's moves and she was helplessly sent into the air via a kick to the chin. Reeling from the blow Suki found the boy behind her in the air. Naruto grit his teeth and readied himself to transform but his actions were unneeded as a pinwheel came flying in and pinned the bandages Lee was going to use to wrap up Suki. Running under Suki, Naruto caught the girl before she could smack into the ground, then turned and saw a strange sight. A talking turtle was berating Lee while said boy was apologizing profusely. An older, more mature copy of Lee appeared on top of the turtle in a puff of smoke. Team 7 didn't quite catch all of the following conversation but apparently Lee had done something wrong because the boy was getting scolded. What happened next made all of Team 7 want to take a scalding hot shower. Sunset, how is there a sunset? It's not possible. Sakura mumbled rocking back and forth. Naruto's eyes were watering and Suki was lucky enough to turn off the Sharingan before that happened. Oh the torture that would have haunted her if that was engraved in her memory. Naruto grabbed his two teammates in a fireman carry and rushed out of there before the Lee and his eyebrow sensei noticed them. They were safe, for now. Well I'm glad you all could make it. Kakashi I smiled, a bit confused as to why Naruto was carrying both his teammates. As he heard him whisper eyebrows and sunsets over and over again he suddenly understood and rushed to his student's side. Are you okay? Speak to me you three. As he shook them all out of their stupor he sighed in relief. It looks like Guy hadn't mind raped them. As much as I would like to give you all a pep talk I believe you should get inside and be ready. Just remember I'm proud of you guys. Kakashi said, making sure his team was okay. Receiving a nod from each of them he stepped to the side and let them in. Once they entered the room, Team 7 was hit with a collective tide of killer intent. Thanks to their run-in with Zabuza they weren't that affected by it. Suki however had a sudden feeling of doom and yelled out Naruto fangirl alert. Naruto immediately went through a few hand seals and switched places with Suki using Kawarimi. Just in time too because once they switched they heard a loud voice scream, Sasuke Kun. A blonde haired girl wearing a purple skirt and matching shirt made a grab for the dark haired figure that she suspected to be Sasuke as Team 7 walked through the door. She coughed a bit as a small amount of ninja smoke appeared and she found herself grabbing none other than Naruto around the neck, their faces inches apart. Uh, hi. Ino screamed out and brought her righteous fist upon the boy she thought of as a pervert. Naruto was instantly knocked to the ground and laid there groaning in pain. Damn you Suki. Naruto's muffled voice called out. Well if that's not troublesome I don't know what is. Shikamaru said, scratching his hair that was done in his normal pineapple style. A larger boy with his hair split because of the way his headband was worn put away his chips and went to help Naruto up. You okay Naruto? Chuji asked. Naruto groaned but thanked his former classmate and dusted himself off. Sorry Ino, but what you were about to do might have caused some issues. Shut up Naruto. Where's my Sasuke forehead? Ino yelled at Sakura. Whatever Ino pig. Like Sasuke would ever date you. Sakura yelled back forgetting for a moment that Sasuke was no longer in the picture. Yahoo looks like the rookies are all here I, Akamaru. Another voice cut in. Kiba walked out from the shadows in the corners of the waiting room, his red fong markings on his cheek stretching as he smirked. His grey jacket and hood covered his brown hair while a small white puppy barked, his head poking out from Kiba's jacket. Beside him was a girl with dark blue hair and pale shining eyes with no pupil. Her tan jacket made her frame look small as she shrunk down in embarrassment. Hinata poked her fingers together as Shino with his large overcoat with a high collar and dark sunglasses walked up beside her, unflappably calm. Naruto palmed his face, stress getting to him when he noticed Suki standing next to him. The look she gave him clearly stated are you going to take care of this or do I have to? The whiskered blonde waved his hand motioning that he'd take care of it. Sakura-chan are you done? 
Sakura stopped yelling at Ino mid-insult and looked to Naruto who glanced over at Suki. Getting the hint she backed up towards her team leaving Ino to stare confused at Sakura, Naruto, and the mystery girl that the rest of the rookie genin had just really noticed. Guys, I'd like you to reintroduce our teammate, Achiha Suki. Suki interrupted. Teammate and Team 10 could only stare dumbly at the girl who looked like she could in fact be Sasuke's sister. Strangely enough it was Shino that broke the silence with the question that was on everyone's mind. What? Chapter 7, Stay Together for the Genin. Snort, snicker, haha. <laughs> the rest of the Kanoha Genin looked curiously at Kiba as the Inazuka boy struggled to contain a laugh. He he ha, Kiba kun. Hinata murmured curiously what is so funny. Nothing, Kiba gasped, losing the fight against his amusement. This just explains why I always thought Sasuke was a little bitchy. Wahaha, Suki's eyes widened slightly before they narrowed dangerously at what the Inazuka said. I'm sorry Kiba, what was that? I do believe you said something about me being a what now? Suki gritted out. The boy in question stopped laughing abruptly and shut his mouth as he felt four different killing intents on him, even one coming from Hinata which scared the hell out of him. Uh ladies let's not be too hasty. Kiba said as he backed himself up while Ino and Sakura walked slowly towards him. The rest of the boys watched in sympathetic pain as both girls beat down the poor boy from the dog clan, his screams of pain and terror making all the other men in the room wince in empathy. Man you guys sure are loud. I'd keep it down if I were you. Naruto looked up from the savage destruction of Kiba to see an older boy walk towards their group. His hair was the same color as Kakashi's Naruto noted, and the way he kept adjusting his glasses made it seem like he needed to get them repaired in the blonde's opinion. Who are you? Me, oh my name is Kabuto. And you'd best keep it down. You're drawing unneeded attention to yourself. Kabuto said. Everyone in this room can tell you guys are rookies. The Kanoha Genin looked out into the crowd and saw the whole room giving them evil looks. A small amount of killing intent was directed towards the Genin as well. Sakura, who had left Kiba moaning in the corner, stepped beside her teammates with a worried expression. They don't look too happy to see us. She whispered to them. No, I don't think they would be. You guys are the fresh meat. These exams are pretty rough. Kabuto said. They'd look for any chance to take out the competition and you guys aren't helping yourselves. Naruto looked on at all the faces staring at them and grinned. Oi. I hope you all are ready to get beaten by me cause I'm here to kick your asses. Naruto yelled out. Surprise washed over the Chunin hopefuls from the blonde boy's comment before turning into anger. Naruto only grinned to himself before getting pulled into a headlock by Sakura. What do you think you're doing you asshole? Sakura hissed. Do you want them to attack us? Kabuto smiled at them and tried to defuse the situation. Now, now, no need to kill your teammate. I believe that I can help you young rookies. The silver-haired boy said to them. Kiba came from behind the group looking at the other with wary eyes, a little beaten up from the girls but okay. Why should we trust you? Well I do believe that I have some experience in these exams. Oh yeah how many times have you taken them? Naruto said after extracting himself from Sakura's grip. Seven times actually. Kabuto said. Kiba laughed loudly and yelled aloud, you suck, which was shushed by Ino. Kabuto only laughed lightheartedly and pulled out a deck of cards. These here are my ninja info cards. They have information about things I've picked up through the years. The genin looked at the deck of orange cards and Kabuto pulled one from the top. Hey what gives their blank? Naruto exclaimed. Ah that's cause I haven't put any chakra into them yet. Now watch. The boy sent a surge of chakra into the card and a map of the hidden countries appeared. As you can see I've gotten some good information. I even have information on some of the genin. Suki's attention was piqued after that last comment and she stepped forward. So you can get information on any genin I ask? Well for the most part yes. Kabuto said looking at Suki strangely before realization flashed in his eyes for but a second and was replaced by his usual happiness. Achiha Sasuke. I always thought that he was a boy. I wonder if this will interfere with Orochimaru-sama's plans. Kabuto fanned out the cards in front of him and said so who do you want to know about? Hyuga Niji, Rock Lee, and Gara. Ah uh, you know their names already. Now that just makes it too easy. Kabuto said pulling out three cards. 
Okay, so we have Hyuga Niji under Jounin leader Mato Guy. Completed 128 D rank missions, 25 C rank, and 3 B rank. From the famed Hyuga clan who hold the Byakugan. He is said to be a prodigy with their Taijutsu style and was the top rookie from his graduation class. Now we have Rock Lee. He is from the same team as Niji and has the same mission record. However he seems to have been the lowest scoring person in his class. His ninjutsu and genjutsu skills are nothing, but his taijutsu is amazing. From what I've heard he is a special case and was requested specifically by Guy. This is probably due to his outstanding hand-to-hand -hand skills. Suki clenched her fist at hearing that. She'd experienced first-hand Lee's skill and now she learned he was the lowest scorer like Naruto. This did not help her self-esteem. Now we have Gara or Sabaka no Gara. let's see, whoa. What's wrong with that guy's card? Naruto asked trying to get a look at it. Well it says here that he has completed 20D ranks, 140C ranks, 200B ranks, and he has an A rank or two under his belt. The scary thing is that that every mission he has been on, he has never gotten a scratch. Everyone was shocked by this and their moods dropped slightly after hearing about all the strong competitors. Now guys it's okay. You all should be fine. There are people here that I know you can take. In fact there is a team from a new village called Odo and my information says they aren't very strong. Kabuto said smiling. Three people behind the silver haired boy bristled at that comment and looked at each other. Hey Dosu we gonna let that glasses wearing freak badmouth us. The spiky haired boy said. I say we teach him a lesson. The girl said, her long black hair swaying from side to side. The boy in the middle looked to nod though it was hard to see it due to the bandages covering most of his face but his right eye. The fur-like coat ruffled with his nod. Shall we? With that Kin threw a round of Senban at Kabuto causing him to dodge to the side. Dosu then rushed at him and swung his right arm at the stumbling teen. Kabuto dodged it and smirked before his eyes widened and his glasses broke. A cough escaped his lips as blood seeped from his mouth. What happened? I thought I dodged. Kabuto thought, don't badmouth Odo Shinobi, punk. Dosu said to the gasping Kabuto, Oi! What the hell you bastards? Naruto yelled, getting ready to pounce on the boy in front of him. Suddenly a blast of smoke caught everyone's attention as a loud voice from the front of the room silenced all the talking. What the hell is going on here? A man bellowed as he walked out of the smoke. His large trench coat swaying from his movements while a black bandana with his leaf headband attached to it covered a good portion of his head. There is no fighting unless I say so. Everyone got that. Ibiki yelled loudly. You got that you Odo brats? Sorry, we're just really hyped up. Dosu apologized though he really didn't mean it. Whatever. Now everyone my name is Marino Ibiki and I shall be your first proctor for the Chunin exams. Find your name on a desk and sit down so I can explain the rules. There was a shuffling of feet as everyone found their seats. Naruto was in the middle of the pack and noticed that Sakura and Suki were placed a fair distance away from him. I wonder what this test will be, the blonde ninja thought. This portion of the exam is the written exam. There was a collective gasp from the crowd but Ibiki carried on. You will be given a test and you and your teammates scores will be taken together. If one person fails then the whole team fails. Naruto started to sweat heavily as he could feel his team's eyes on him. You all start out with 10 points. For each wrong answer you will lose a point. If you are caught cheating you will lose a point. If you are caught cheating three times you fail automatically. You and your team will then be kicked out. And remember we are all watching. Ibiki finished his speech and motioned to the ninja that were along the walls. Naruto's pupils slowly shrank to the size of pinpricks as the reality of the situation hit him. So this is a test then? Naruto said raising his hand, the only audible thought that would come to him. Ibiki sneered at the boy and walked around the desks to look down at him. Yes, that would be correct. What part of that didn't you get idiot? Ibiki snarled. Naruto bristled at that comment but held his tongue. If this guy was looking down on him he'd show this jerk. Now let's begin. The genin were all silent as they tried to complete their tests. Suki was looking down at her paper in morbid fascination at the questions in front of her. What the hell is this? No one could answer these questions. Unknown to her Sakura was almost halfway done with her test with Ino watching her intently. 
Suki looked around her and noticed that something was off. Many people were like her and were staring baffled at their papers. It then hit her. Why would they only take away a point if you cheat? If this were a test back at the academy we would fail immediately. They want us to cheat. Suki looked around before looking down and closing her eyes. Sharingan. She whispered, her jiu-jitsu springing to life and she peered up slowly, easily finding someone who seemed to be doing well on their test. She immediately started to copy their movements. Unlike his female team members, Naruto was having a small breakdown. He was racking his brain for any way to get past this test and he could only come to one conclusion. He had to cheat. Sifting through his moveset Naruto failed to realize who he was sitting next to. Hinata had noticed that Naruto was struggling. After using her Byakugan to copy the answers from one of the people sitting in front of her she used the rest of her time to observe her crush. She had practiced observing the blonde before, in the past, though she wouldn't compare it to the fangirl obsession that other girls from her class had with Sasuke. She would never admit that it was dangerously close. Shaking herself from those thoughts, Hinata shyly poked Naruto on the arm to get his attention. Naruto Kuen. Naruto looked over and saw the blue haired girl poking her fingers together. Raising his eyebrow in confusion, he leaned forward. I, if you w would like, you can look at in my test. Naruto looked at her in surprise and smiled. Hinata may have acted a bit weird sometimes, but she was really a nice girl. But he really didn't want to get her in trouble. She seemed too nice to get thrown out. Looking around he noted the proctors watching everything like a hawk. A pair of eyes found his and he too stared at one another for a moment before they both looked away. No. If he cheated off Hinata's paper he might get her thrown out too. He had to do this on his own. But he still had no ideas. Sorry Hinata, but I can't do that. Hinata looked at Naruto and was afraid she did something wrong but Naruto only grinned at her. I don't want you to get in trouble for helping me. I'd never hear the end of it from Kiba. Getting help from you is a, real, stretch. Naruto said as his eyes widened. Hinata seemed to calm down after that and nodded before turning to look at the others wondering why Naruto started to speak strangely at the end. For Naruto, as he was speaking he just got one of the most brilliant ideas of his life. Now to make sure he could go through with it. Looking all around him, Naruto leaned forward and quietly whispered hench as he transformed his arm. Leaning back in an attempt to look casual, Naruto stretched his arm to the ground and began walking his hand forward with his fingers. Snaking his rubber limb through chair legs, Naruto's hand arrived behind one of the examinees who had finished. Waiting until the older boy wasn't looking, Naruto snatched the boy's paper and let his arm retract. Whoosh! Snap! Everyone jumped at the unexpected sound, looking around. What the hell was that? Ibiki boomed, peering into the crowd of Genin angrily. Ignoring the stir he'd caused, Naruto erased the other boy's name and cheerfully wrote in his own. He he he, who's an idiot now? He whispered as his grin reached his eyes while he looked at Ibiki as the imposing man looked around for the source of the noise. Hey, what the hell happened to my test? The boy Naruto stole the test from yelled out. Hinata looked at the genin confused seeing as she had used him to copy her answers. The genin was kicked out after the outburst and Naruto just sat there and smiled. Suki however had heard that elastic-like snap before and her eyes fell on her smiling teammate. He did something but as long as he passed she didn't care. That's complete bullshit. Naruto yelled loudly as he slammed his hand onto the table glaring at the man in front of him. Even if you ban me from these exams I still will find a way to become Hokage. You can bet your life that I will do it. Naruto growled out towards Ibiki and Ibiki only stared back before looking up to the rest of the genin, most of them having already left. So no one else is going to quit now? His question was met with defiant stares. It seems that blonde brat gave them confidence the head of the TNI department thought. Fine then, I guess you all pass. What? Being a chunin is more than just using your strength. You have to be a good leader and know how to make tough decisions. Ibiki said as he took off his bandana and showed the room his scars and burns. This is what being a ninja is about. You will need to lead someday and be ready to sacrifice everything. Are you ready for that? The scarred man spoke to the whole room but his eyes were on Naruto alone. Naruto nodded to the man and he nodded back and put back on his headband and wrap. 
Now since Ibiki was cut off as one of the windows to the side of the room shattered and a smoke bomb went off. A banner then crashed in and attached itself to the ceiling with kunai tied to the corners of it. The banner said, here comes the second proctor, the sexy and single Midarashi Anko. A blur flew in and once the smoke cleared all the guys had to hold their noses thanks to the young woman in front of them. Here I am, Tokabetsu Jounin, the sexy, single Anko. She said as her tan mini skirt and matching trench coat flapped behind her. Her fishnet shirt barely covered her modesty and sent the boys' imaginations wild while her purple hair was pulled up. Wow Ibiki you sure are slacking off. There are 26 teams here, what can I say? We got a good bunch this year. Was his reply, TCH whatever. Alright you maggots get outside and follow me. Anko then jumped out the window leaving a very confused group behind her. Naruto got up from his chair and ran up next to his teammates as they filed outside. So what do you guys think is next? He asked. Suki shrugged and Sakura held her chin in contemplation. We might have to do an obstacle course. We've already done a test. Sakura said as they walked out to where Anko was standing in front of a large gate. Naruto looked into the forest behind the fence while howls and roars filled the air. I hope not. Or at least not in there. He gulped. The group formed around Anko as she explained the rules of the second exam. After Naruto heard that he nudged Sakura causing her to look at him. I'll take the obstacle course please. The pink-haired Jenin could only nod with a pale face. Now line up and sign these waiver forms. After that, pick up your scroll and head to your gate. Anko said. Team 7 signed their forms feeling in the pit of their stomach that something bad was going to happen. Grabbing their heaven scroll, they waited for the bell and when the gates opened, they rushed off. So if we get lost and separated we are going to need a password. Suki said as they rested on a branch after running for a few hours. Naruto and Sakura agreed and sat down. So the password will be the Nin song. The shadows and silence is a ninja's weapon. Those who hide in their weapons will surely win. Got it, got it. Wait, what? Suki shook her head Naruto. I'm not repeating it Dobe. Just be ready if something happens. Suki said. Naruto grunted and nodded before standing up. Fine then, I just won't get separated from you guys. Naruto boasted. See that you don't. Don't worry, I won't. Just make sure you keep up Suki team. Naruto was smacked in the head after he said that. Naruto quit talking to Suki like that. Sakura yelled. Ow gee Sakura-chan. You hit Hadash. Wait, do you guys hear something? Team 7 stopped talking to hear a loud whooshing noise. Suddenly, a great gust of wind whipped around the three teens. Sakura and Suki were lucky enough to get behind a tree and brace themselves with chakra. Naruto wasn't so lucky and flew through the trees. Gah what fuck. Naruto's yell was lost in the wind as he tumbled head over toe into the dark forest. Naruto landed heavily and rolled on the ground before stopping next to a tree. Coughing a bit, he pushed himself up and checked his equipment. Ugh man, what was that? Well looks like all my stuff is good and Hawk's phone is still perfectly safe. Man I guess this thing is made of metal. Naruto said, poking his phone. Now where am I? Naruto looked around the clearing he was in but stopped when he heard a hissing noise. Turning around he came face to face with the biggest snake he had ever seen. Sweet Kami you're bigger than a house. The shocked boy whispered. The snake screeched before lunging for the boy. Naruto managed to jump out of the way with a very unmanly shriek. The snake crashed into the ground and reared back up while letting the dirt and mud fall from its mouth. Naruto jumped to a nearby tree and looked at the snake in fear. Holy crap I'm going to die. The snake reared its body up and lunged for Naruto again. With a precise jump Naruto flew above the snake and quickly transformed his arm, Luffy style. Goma Goma no Pistaru. Naruto yelled throwing his arm back then shooting it forward. The extending fist smashed into the snake's head. The force behind the punch caused the snake's head to fly back before it brought its head forward again. Its eyes looked enraged after the punch and Naruto yelped before flipping over the creature's next lunge and sliding down the body of the snake. Not even that knocked you out. Fine, let's try this one. Naruto said as he ran around the giant serpent, its eyes following the blonde. 
When the snake struck again, Naruto jumped to the side and stretched his arm again. Goma Goma no Pistaru. As the arm stretched towards the snake Naruto grabbed his transformed arm with his left hand and twanged it so that it sprang up and down. To shot again, gum gum shotgun. Instead of one fist flying towards the snake the vibration from the rubber arm made it so that it was a small flurry punches that rained down on snake. The extra hits caused the snake to crash down into the ground and Naruto's arm sprang back with a loud snap. Haha <laughs> take that you stupid reptile. Naruto yelled as his arm became normal again in a burst of smoke. As he turned around a shadow fell upon him causing him to look up. Kami have mercy, he squeaked before he was swallowed. The snake seemed to smirk and settled down for a few minutes. A loud roar from its stomach put the snake back on the alert but it was for naught. Tajuakage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu. Hundreds of Naruto's sprang from the snake and the serpent was left a blown up husk. That was disgusting. Naruto said as he wiped off the snake guts from his clothes. Yuck. This is worse than the time I had to throw you at that Zabuza guy. A Naruto said as it tried to get grime out of its hair. Yeah, well, this is way worse. Wait a second. Naruto stopped trying to clean up and looked at the Bunshin. What do you mean when you said, I had to throw you? Wasn't that Suki who did that and plus, how do you even know you did that? Oh yeah, it was her wasn't it? And me, well, I guess I keep my own little conscience. You assigned me as your main clone that one time so I named myself Neruichi. Though I guess you could just call me Ichi for short. Ichi said as he squeezed out his hair. Naruto looked at his clone oddly. So whenever I use Kage Bunshin you'll be there, pretty much. I'm your main clone so even if you call one out that'll be me I believe. I'm still just a clone though. Naruto stroked his chin in thought. Hmm odd, but whatever. I need to go find the girls so see ya, see ya boss. And with that Naruto dispelled his clones and bound off. Naruto. Suki yelled as she saw Naruto fly away. Suki looked back to see a woman from Kusa drop from the foliage and look at her and Sakura with a hungry look. Suki-chan, what are we going to do? Naruto isn't here. Sakura whispered, don't worry. We'll just get the scroll off this woman and find the dobe after. Suki said, well hello Sasuke-kun. I'm glad I finally found you. I've been hoping to battle you for your scroll. The woman from the village of grass said, Suki glared at the woman in front of her and reached for a kunai. If this lady still thought I'm Sasuke then she must be here to try to get the glory of beating me. Suki thought, disgusted. Sometimes having a famous name wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Sorry to disappoint. Suki yelled across the clearing. But I'm not Sasuke anymore. But if you still want to be beat I'll gladly give you a beating. The woman walked out from the shadow of the branches and looked closely at Suki before tilting her head curiously. So the rumors are true. She chuckled. The famed Uchiha Sasuke is actually a girl. My, this is a strange occurrence but it doesn't hinder my plans too much. So now I do believe we have an exam to finish. Suki and Sakura pulled their weapons out after hearing the Kusa Genin's comment and waited for her to move. She only shook her head and scoffed while reaching for her eye. Ha, huh, foolish. She pulled down her eyelid and the two girls were instantly hit by the strongest killer intent they have ever felt. You should never let the enemy make the first move. The mysterious woman said. Suki could only stare in fear as she saw her death. She saw it over and over again and the cause of it was this strange woman. I'm going to die. I'm truly going to die. Suki thought as she stood petrified on the branch her pink-haired teammate not faring any better. The Kusa Nin further disturbed them by pulling out her scroll and asking them if this what they wanted before swallowing it whole. As Sakura fell to her knees and tears fell from her eyes the woman only let out a sinister chuckle. Now really, is that all you have? I would have expected more from the Uchiha. Well I guess if you're this bad you aren't worth keeping alive. The Kusa Genin then pulled a few kanai from her pouch and flung them at the two girls. Suki watched the flying weapons approach her and could do nothing as her mind was still paralyzed in fear. While they inched closer a voice boomed in her mind. Move you fool. The voice broke the trance Suki was in and with quick thinking she bit her lip till she bled to make the pain free her body. The kanai struck wood and the older genin looked at the tree that the two Kanoha ninja were hiding behind. 
How interesting, using pain to break your fear. I commend you for that. Suki looked back from the shadows after snapping Sakura out of her fear. This woman was strong, maybe even stronger than Zabuza. What was she doing in these exams? Suki dismissed those thoughts while quietly thanking the voice for the help. The girl version of her younger self still was with her, this may need to be addressed later. Suki pushed that thought to the back of her mind and turned to Sakura. Suki, who is that? Sakura gasped. That can't be a genin. We may have to fight our way out of this Sakura. When I give you the signal I want you to use your best genjutsu. You have learned one from that book right? Sakura nodded her head and started to build chakra for her technique. Suki looked behind the tree again and slowly walked out. Oh, so you are ready to fight now? That last attack surprised me. But now you have my full attention. Suki got into a fighting stance as her Sharingan sprang to life. Now I will show you the might of the Uchiha. Suki sped forward using chakra to boost her speed as she ran up the tree towards the other ninja. The Kusa woman laughed loudly and ran to meet Suki while throwing out a punch. Suki easily dodged to the side while still running and threw out her leg and caught her opponent in the stomach. Hearing a hiss of pain, Suki capitalized on the woman's stunned form and spun around the genin, slamming her fist into her head. The woman fell forward and tried to right herself only to receive a kick to the face that sent her skidding across the tree branch. She stood up slowly and brushed herself off while smiling still. My, it seems you do have some skills. Orochimaru, still disguised as the Kusa woman, cackled loudly as he jumped from branch to branch. He was glad that Suki seemed to be fighting back. After she had broken free from her fear and saved that pink-haired girl they had traded blows back and forth. He was currently going higher into the treetops looking around. Suki was out of his field of vision at the moment. Just as he jumped into the air again he felt like the sky and the earth were ripped apart and flipped upside down. This gave him an unwanted case of vertigo that was sickening but not too debilitating to a ninja of his power. So that pink-haired brat knows Ninpo, Sora Kagami no Jutsu, Ninja Art, Sky Mirror Jutsu. Quite the complicated Genjutsu for a genin. Orochimaru thought. His thoughts were cut off as Suki came from above and slammed his body into the foliage of a large tree. Suki wasn't done as she pulled varying sized shuriken from her pouch and threw them at the disguised Sanin. Using her Sharingan to guide the attack, she manipulated the wires leading down to the shuriken to wrap around Orochimaru, effectively pinning him to the tree. Now it's time to end this. Suki said as she ran through hand seals. Using the trick she had learned from Kakashi's book she held the chakra in her mouth and compressed it, effectively making the fire chakra raise in temperature. Katan, Ryuka no Jutsu, Fire Style, Fire Dragon Jutsu. Suki opened her mouth as a flame roared around her and then ran down the wire leading to the trapped shinobi. The flame looked almost white hot, much more powerful than it should be, as it ran down the line and hit Orochimaru. The fire hit him in a blast of heat and incinerated a good portion of the tree leaving the rest of it smoldering. Suki plopped down and breathed heavily. That was one of her strongest fire jutsus and compressing the chakra to a more concentrated form took a lot out of her. Luckily, the technique should have finished that Kusa Genin. Too bad it might have burned that scroll too. Sakura jumped up to the branch that she was resting on and sat down beside Suki. So you think we killed her? Sakura asked in a shaky voice. She was a ninja but killing was still foreign to her. She may not have killed the other person but she sure helped. Just as Suki was about to respond the two of them heard chuckling and both turned to the melting crater in the tree to see a form pull itself out. Oh my, what power. I truly am proud of you Suki-chan. Orochimaru stood up and pulled off the face he was using showing his pale visage to the world. Oh yes, I do believe you will do nicely for this gift. Orochimaru jumped forward, reaching for the downed form of Suki when an orange blur knocked him off balance. Well now, looks like I came just in time. Naruto said as he stood up in front of his two teammates. You guys okay? By the way Suki, I forgot that stupid password. Naruto. Thank god you're okay. This girl, no guy, is really powerful. We need to get, what smells like snake guts. Sakura said cutting off her speech as she sniffed the air. Suki too gave a sniff and wrinkled her nose at the foul smell. The two girls looked at Naruto who looked away with a blush. What? Shut up. 
I had to survive okay. Naruto yelled back. Anyways, come on this guy can't be too hard. We can take him. Suki picked herself up and stood in front of Naruto while reaching into her pouch. Here take our scroll. This is what you want right? Suki said about to throw the scroll over, ignoring the squawk of surprise from Naruto. Just as she was about to throw the scroll over Naruto grabbed her arm and pushed her away. What the hell Dobe, who are you? Naruto said jumping away from Suki and Sakura onto another branch. The Suki that I know doesn't just give up like that. Naruto said pointing at Suki, oh I believe she was doing the right thing naruto Kuen, Giving an offering to the predator so you, the prey, can get away. Orochimaru held up his hand smirking, shut up or I'll shut you up. Naruto growled out putting the scroll into his pouch. Kukuku what makes you think you can defeat me if your obviously more talented teammate can't? Naruto's eyes flickered red before they went back to their shining blue as he growled. You want to see what I can do? Naruto made a hand seal and four clones appeared beside him. I'll show you what I can do. After that exclamation Naruto and his bunshin all ran out going to flank Orochimaru. Wait Naruto, stop. Suki yelled as she went to stop him. She stumbled and reached for the trunk of the tree, finally noticing how much her last attack had really drained her. Damn, I can't move right. Naruto is in way over his head. Suki thought as she yelled out for him to stop. Sakura watched in fear as the strange man weaved in and out of Naruto's attacks while dodging surprise attacks from his clones. This person frightened her. At first he was a strange woman from Kusa but now he looked like someone she knew she had seen in books. He was someone of great danger and one of the most dangerous men in the ninja world. Orochimaru. Sakura ignored Suki's puzzled expression and ran to the edge of their platform-like branch. Naruto, run. Hurry please. Sakura screamed. That's Orochimaru. Orochimaru looked down at Sakura with a small frown as he threw the blonde's final clone into a tree effectively dispelling it. Well it seems like my cover is blown. Now I have to get rid of that pink-haired girl before she screams it out to the whole forest. Orochimaru said to himself as he performed a set of seals before slamming his hand onto the wood he was standing on. Kuchios no Jutsu, Summoning Jutsu. A large cloud of smoke obscured the three genin's vision and when the smoke cleared they saw an enormous snake towering over them. Shit! Not another huge snake! Naruto yelled as the snake straightened itself so that it stood tall with Orochimaru on its head. With a flick of the Sanin's wrist the snake hissed loudly before rushing at the two girls. Naruto's eyes widened and he rushed forward. Just as the snake was upon Suki and Sakura, just as Sakura screamed in fear and backed away, just as Suki stumbled back and the Sharingan faded due to lack of chakra concentrated to it, a roar pierced the sky and blur of orange and red sprang in front of the snake. The Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune had tapped into his tenant's chakra and used the blood red energy to speed in front of the snake. With a yell of anger he punched the snake making it screech and its head fly up. Naruto screamed in rage and jumped high as he kicked the larger than normal snake into the ground, his ruby red eyes shining in malice. The snake screeched out again as it felt pain erupt across its body, but the Kyubi induced craze that Naruto was in didn't let him stop there. The blonde boy landed on the snake's head and pointed his hand down at the serpent in a gun shape. Red chakra swirled around him before Naruto's finger glowed bright with crimson power as an orb encased his pointer finger's tip. Raigen! Naruto roared letting loose a blast of red chakra that tore into the snake's head brutally, sending it back to the summon realm. Orochimaru looked on in surprise, a sick grin spreading across his disguised face. Oh my yes Naruto-kun, you have such an enormous amount of power don't you? The snake Sanin laughed having jumped away since Naruto's first hit. Naruto turned his head up to Orochimaru before growling and blurring up to him. Suki could only watch mesmerized as her teammate moved at insane speeds to the point where he flickered in and out of her vision. So scared was she that she had forgotten to activate her Sharingan again, the Dejitsu that could maybe give her a chance to see Naruto blurring about. Naruto appeared on a branch below Orochimaru and threw out one of his arms towards him. The arm transformed quickly and flew at the surprised man. Orochimaru's eyes widened at the act and quickly leaned to the side letting the punch pass by him. Goma Goma no Rikido, Gum Gum Rocket, what the hell is this? Orochimaru thought but had to jump up to avoid Naruto who used his rubber arm to pull him at startling speeds towards Orochimaru. 
The genin skidded across the branch before launching himself back at his enemy and throwing his arm back once more to stretch. Orochimaru was taken by surprise of the ferocity of the boy and watched as Naruto sank low and threw the stretched fist forward to slam into his stomach for a close-range attack. Goma Goma no Burrito, Gum Gum Bullet Orochimaru's body careened back and slammed into a tree with a sickening crunching sound. The force of his impact was so strong that the massive tree trunk that Orochimaru hit started to groan and crack. The snake Sanin pulled himself out of his crater with a grunt. What power! I can only assume that it is coming from the Kyubi. Orochimaru said standing tall. However, those strange attacks intrigue me. I will have to watch you more closely Naruto Kuen. After Orochimaru said his he appeared behind the berserker boy with blinding speed and grabbed him by the neck. Amuse me more in the future boy. I can't wait to see what you can do. The Sanin said as he wrapped his tongue around the blonde to free up his hands to perform seals. His fingertips glowed in an ethereal light as the kanji for the main five elements showed on his fingers. Gogi Fuin, five element seal. With a quick jab the man's hand struck Naruto's abdomen and the boy let out a pained scream. His vision started to fade and he felt weightless. The last thing he could remember as he tried to stay conscious was the creepy man extending his neck and biting Suki on the neck. Suki, so you like these precious arms of yours do you? Gah! Let go you crazy bitch! Graph! Crack! Suki, please stop! Naruto opened his eyes slowly and groggily rolled himself into a sitting position. He had been awakened by screaming from some very disturbing dreams. He couldn't remember all of it, just something about a red glowing eye and a huge cage. Odd. Looking around he noticed that he was in some kind of tunnel made of wood. Naruto was interrupted from his observations as he heard someone scream at another person to stop. Suki stop. If you don't you'll rip his arms off. Sakura screamed as she ran towards the crazed Uchiha. She had been taking care of Suki and Naruto after that crazy man had done something weird to both of them. She thanked Kami that they even got out of there alive. They should be dead after facing someone as strong as Orochimaru. While she was taking care of the two, a team of Oto Genin had dropped down on her and said they were going to fight the Uchiha. Using the best of her skills, Sakura tried to hold them off but was defeated. She was saved by Rock Lee just in time but after using an amazing move, he was left open to a counterattack. Just as the Oto Ninja were going to go for the sleeping form of Suki, Team 10 had come to the rescue. However, even with their help the other genin had no hesitation about causing harm to their teammate if it also caused harm to Ino's body. Sakura was frantic as she tried to help out, but right when Lee's team came out of nowhere the boy with the Byakugan told the sound team to look back towards the place Suki was laying. There in front of everyone was Suki with strange black markings sprouting from her left shoulder. Accompanying the flame-like tattoos was a dark and evil-feeling purple chakra that was strong enough to be seen. This repulsive chakra spiraled off the girl for a bit before she looked toward the sitting form of Sakura. Suki had asked who had injured Sakura and when Sakura's eyes drifted to the genin from sound Suki took action. The one boy from Oto with the spiky black hair had tried to blast the girl away using a powerful blast of sound that affected the air and sent a wave of it at Suki. When Zaka boasted about blowing her apart, Suki had appeared behind him in a burst of speed and beat him down to the ground. She wasn't done though for after Zaka was slammed to the ground she grabbed his arms and pulled it behind his back, stretching in a way they shouldn't be. As Suki pulled the boy's arms till they cracked Sakura had rushed forward and held Suki around her waist, screaming for her to stop. This was the scene that Naruto came to as he wearily walked out of the canopy. As everyone's attention was set on Suki and what she was doing no one noticed Naruto till he stepped on a twig causing everyone to turn their heads to him. What the hell? Naruto said rubbing his neck and looking around. What's going on here? Hey bushy brows, what happened to you? Naruto said noticing the injured form of Lee. Naruto, you're up. You're okay. Sakura said relieved. Suki too was relieved as she let the boy in her grasp fall forward in a heap to groan in pain. The tattoo marks slowly receded while the disturbing purple chakra dissipated. Dosu looked around him and noticed that with all these kanoha, by himself he was no match. It seems we have been bested. I ask that you let me leave with my teammates in exchange for my scroll. Dosu said putting down his earth scroll. Suki eyed him before inclining her head at him to leave. The boy picked up Kin and Zaku and bounded off. 
He didn't know why Orochimaru wanted him and his team to fight the Uchiha but he had said nothing about him giving her the cursed seal. Naruto watched the team leave while sitting down against a tree to relieve some of his grogginess. He may have just woken up but he still felt like crap for some reason. It felt like his chakra was fluctuating inside of him. If so, that can't be good. With shifty chakra he was afraid to try any jutsu. Especially, the ray gone. Naruto heard a sound next to him and spotted Suki sitting down beside him. He looked to his side and noticed her disheveled appearance. You okay dobe? Yeah fine I guess. You don't look too good yourself. Naruto replied. Better than you. Naruto grew a tick mark on his head but stayed silent. So are you going to tell me and Sakura what happened back there, when you went batshit crazy back then? Naruto looked confused for a moment before understanding dawned in his eyes. He looked away from the girl and scratched his head, clearly uncomfortable. Ah that, well I'll tell you about that after the exam. It's kind of a long story. Naruto said while chuckling nervously. Suki cocked her eyebrow but said nothing. He said he would tell her so that was all she needed to hear. Mmm, fine. Well anyways, get up. We still have to get to the tower plus we still need another scroll. Why do we still need a scroll? Those other guys just gave us the one we need right? Yeah, but I don't know what happened to the other one. When I put theirs in my pouch I didn't find ours. Suki said as they walked back to Sakura. Sakura looked up to them as Ino fixed her hair after the last battle. Yeah, but I still have ours remember. I put it in my pack after that one guy attacked us. See. Naruto replied pulling out the heaven scroll. So we can head to the tower? Sakura asked hopefully. Naruto flipped the scroll in the air and caught with a grin on his face. Let's get the hell out of this forest. Team 7 had reached the tower the next day with only a few issues. Thanks to a team from Amen, Naruto found out that he could still use Kage Bunshin to a degree and he could also still transform but he couldn't hold it like he normally could. Whatever that snake guy did to him was really messing him up. They also ran into Kabuto again and thanks to him they had made it to the tower a lot faster than just walking wildly through the forest. Naruto looked around and noticed that many of the teams that began the second exam were no longer there. I wonder if they died, Naruto thought with a gulp. Turning his attention back to what was going on, he listened to the Sandame explain why the Chunin exams were held. Naruto blanched when he heard that they weren't going on to the third exam just yet. When the Hokage was about to explain more a pillar of smoke appeared before the examinees. Please Hokage-sama allow me explain the next exam. The mysterious man said. The Hokage thought for a moment before agreeing and letting the man stand straight to face the crowd. He looked of average build with dark hair and the headband used as a bandana but what everyone noticed immediately was how sickly he looked. My name is Gekko Hei 8 and I shall be the proctor for the preliminaries. I ask you all that if you wish to resign then now would be the best time. Naruto looked in shock as he watched Kabuto leave. He thought that the older boy would be able to withstand the exam. Sadly not the blonde guest. Hei 8 ushered everyone into the balconies that were set up as he motioned for everyone to look at the display board. Due to the amount of people these prelims will decide who will go into the final exam. First up, everyone watched with baited breed Uchiha Suki vs Akato Yoroi. Naruto looked at Suki and watched as she walked down the stairs. Before she hit the floor Naruto called out one more thing to her. You better kick his ass Suki. That's it for part 2. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.